I call the Honourable Annie King. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister's speech at the beginning of a political year is often uh, eagerly awaited by commentators, the media, politicians, even some of the public, and I suppose even more so in an election year. The speech is seen as the Prime Minister's chance to put forward his government's vision, to outline his plan and programmes to make New Zealand a better place to live, to show that he's got command of the issues that we face um, in this very unstable world that we, we live in, and to give reassurance to the vulnerable members of our society, children, disabled, the sick, the elderly, and to show that he is in touch with the real issues that New Zealanders face today. And there's always a certain amount of expectation about what will be in the speech. And of course, for this speech, we had the usual hoopla and hype about this showcase piece. In fact, one commentator went so far as to predict that the Prime Minister's speech would plot the course the government will take and acquire a strategic direction. Well, I have to say to that commentator, he must be feeling very, very disappointed because we didn't get a vision, we didn't get a plan, we didn't get a strategic direction that would perhaps say, give us a brighter future, maybe. Or what about one that would turbocharge the economy or perhaps something that would make, be ambitious for New Zealand or, or maybe even catch up with Australia, let alone give us a step change for New Zealand. No, what did we get, Mr Speaker? We got a hastily cobbled together announcement that the way forward, the, the breakthrough, the cut through was to restructure the public service. Too many employees, bloated public service, will get rid of a few and will replace them with a few consultants. In fact, a lot of consultants. You see, they don't count when you're counting up public servants. You know, it's the old National Party trick, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Their usual merry-go-round they run when they are in government. You know, this morning on Morning Report, John Key couldn't even name which departments were on the block, how many jobs would be lost, how much would be saved, how much of it would it cost, or even when it would be done. And you know, Mr Speaker, we then had to listen to a chorus of the usual sycophants saying, what an amazing plan. What an amazing Prime Minister. If I've ever heard something like the Emperor with no clothes, it was listening to all the people they ring up and tell to put out statements saying how wonderful the plan was. Well, I have to say, what we got from John Key was more like a political circus. You see, he walked the tightrope between lies, damn lies and statistics. He juggled the latest unemployment figures. He even dropped the ball on job creation. He said that the ballooning unemployment figures now at 6.8% with 265,000, I'll say it again, Mr. Speaker, 265,000 people in New Zealand are now officially jobless. Officially jobless, according to the latest Household Labour Force survey. And what did John Key say about that? He said, people should relax. He said, don't give up hope. It's just a survey. The information is old. The survey is notoriously volatile. And then we had the doozy of them all. Came from the Minister of Unemployment. She chimed in. She said this. A slow recovery fits the government's focus on the economy. A slow recovery fits the government's focus on the economy. You know what we say, Mr. Speaker? Hear, hear. That's what we say. Hear, hear. The government's focus on the economy has been about gimmicks. It's been about slogan. And no wonder it's been slow to recover. Unemployment in New Zealand going up. Unemployment in Australia going down. 
And today, just before we came into this house, in fact, as we came into this house, the latest unemployment and benefit numbers were released by the Minister. She's had them five days. She slipped them out as we came into the house. What does it tell us? Almost 100,000 more New Zealanders are now on all main benefits since 2008 under that government. Under that, that's their welfare reform policy, put more on the benefit. John Key did acrobatics over the rising cost of living and the drop in real wages that have occurred under his regime. He said people were getting more when they were getting less. He said prices were going down when they were going up. He said they were better off when people are going backwards. And it's very, very sure it's a long time since he walked down McGee and Close uh, and talked to the people down there. Because if he did, he could have actually read and heard what they had to say about this national government. They said they've done little to help the poor. He's making everything better for high income earners, not for no income ones. Bread, milk, Everything that we need as a basic necessity for us to go on is more expensive. It's getting harder for us to feed our kids. So who do we believe? Do we believe John Key or the ordinary struggling family living in that street that he made a feature of during the last election? And then, Mr Speaker, he did the Higher Wire Act over his plans to sell off our state assets. He told us that we would own more of our own country if we sold a few shares to mum and dad investors who already own them. I don't quite understand that. How are we going to own more if we sell to mum and dad investors of something we already own. I mean, I'd really like him to tell us how that works. Mind you, it is a risky move. It is a risky move by the Prime Minister because he's removed his usual safety net. You know, the one he does, the U-turn he does when things get a bit politically hot because he has said he doesn't give a damn whether New Zealanders care about selling the assets or not. He's going to sell them. And then, Mr Speaker, to complete the political circus... He has acted like the clown. And I'm not talking about him mincing down the catwalk. I'm talking about the poor joke that he has played on the most vulnerable members of our society, children in this country of New Zealand. They got a fleeting mention as a postscript, a sort of an afterthought in his speech. You know, someone said to him, you better f throw a few lines in the speech about some kids because Labor has set out a comprehensive policy to lift our children and our families out of poverty, to give every child in this country a good start, to put support at the beginning of their lives, Dr Smith, support at the beginning of their lives, not waste millions of dollars putting them into boot camps 14 and 15 years later, to value the caring of children, because we value those who care and nurture and look after children, not reduced to only the rich who can stay home and look after their children. And while those that are in struggling middle and income and low income families and sole parents are told that they don't count, Mr Speaker. If this Prime Minister truly believed in a real future, put forward a vision for this country, it would have been about growing the economy, growing jobs so people could go into them to give them dignity of work and opportunity, and it would have been giving a future to our children. It's not about just the economy, it's about the economy and about giving people a future in this country. He would have taken notice of his political science advisor, Professor Gluckman. He would have gone to Anne Tolley and he would have said, reverse those cuts in early childhood education. That 250 odd million you're stripping out of early childhood education must go back in because our young children matter in this country. It is a right for them to have education. Why is it when you make your first cut as a government, you pick on the 
smallest, most vulnerable kids that have no voice in this country from that government. They have no voice at the cabinet table in this government. And so the first moves they make are against those who have no voice. He should have listened to his, uh, his advisor, Dr Gluckman. He would have addressed child poverty in New Zealand and the shame of that government and that Prime Minister is to say in this House before Christmas they had no intention of eradicating child poverty in this country. Child poverty, that is a shame for this country. And when we were in government, we lifted 130,000 families out of poverty through working for families that John Key called communism by stealth. But I notice he's scared to get rid of it. Mr Speaker, that wasn't a plan. It was a real disappointment.